Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Blizzard Watch podcast. Uh, I'm Matt. I'm your host. With me this week are, I already mentioned, astonishing co-hosts in the pre-show. You should totally come to our pre-show, guys. They're really good. We had a real interesting discussion today. But anyway, Joe Perez and Liz Harper. How are you guys doing? Have you had been having fun in various games that you've been playing? Liz, you go first. Uh, howdy. I have been continuing to have fun in Dragonflight, though I'm... I'm kind of I'm kind of feeling like I'm slowing down, like I'm getting into that part where it's oh it's repetitive. I'm doing the same quests every week. Yeah, yeah, I'm just slowing down a little. Yeah, because you you know you get to that point where it's like okay, I'm ready for the new thing now. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, yeah. I'm s- still having fun, but it's like a lot of okay. I'm logging on. I'm doing exactly what I did last week. Okay, yeah, not as much for me because I'm I'm working on the multiple characters at once. But yeah, mm-hmm. I can I, I get what you're saying. It's definitely something that I've I felt before. Joe? Uh, still having fun in Dragonflight as well. Uh, I just finished leveling my uh, Hunter's Eye level, and uh, it's, you know, finally able to do, like, LFR and stuff like that on my Hunter, so I'm super excited about that. Um, and now I'm going to be moving on to a Warlock and trying to get a Warlock oh. to maximum level uh, for the first time in uh, 10 years, give or take. So, just playing around and doing that not as as hard as i was before not as as often as i was i'm trying to to get back to some of the other games that i didn't finish as well so i didn't finish god of war i know the stuff that happens but i didn't finish it gotta finish that gotta finish bayonetta still didn't finish the new pokemon uh so many games too many games yeah i i I feel you on that one in fact i feel you so much on that one that i decided to start playing dragon i mean fallout 4 again (laughs) <laughs> and I'm playing it entirely as a post-apocalyptic building simulator. Yeah. Like, I yeah, only I there. only do enough stuff to get materials and then I go back and <laughs> I have built this this five-story tower. I hit the height limit. You can only go <laughs> like you can't build any higher than like I was in the middle of building one and I couldn't put any more stuff down up top. And I'm like what's going on? And I know I'm not at the size limit. So what's what's happening? It was the height limit. You can't go any taller than five and a half stories. Yeah, there like was if a, you have the four. If you have the four story elevator installed, which I did, um, the next level above is you have to stop. Like it will not let you go above that by more than one floor. That's amazing. Uh, there was a there was a person when Fall of Far first came out, and I just imagine this is going to be you at some point. Uh, who figured out how to build an ultimate base and then kite everything he could back to it so that the base killed everything for him. <laughs> oh, I've did, I've done that. No, I, <laughs> I have one of my bases has 1,156 defense. Yeah. Nothing, nothing. There's events where it's like this, this settlement is under attack. If I go back to try and intervene in the, in the attack, I will not arrive in time. Even if I'm instant traveling, they will all be dead before I get there. There's just so many turrets. Like it, it's, it's, like some people were in Wildstar with like, you know, cool, elaborate stuff. I am in Fallout 4 with turrets. I'm I will gonna, find a way to put a turret somewhere. I'm going to pour one out for uh, raids and the Rain Beer Road. Yeah. Like imagine <laughs> that, but with guns. That's, that's, I am, I'm just quintessentially American in this one way, in that I have completely festooned my base with firearms. There's just no way, nothing can get near. Uh, I remember at one point, one of the ultimate death claws spawned. Because oh. <laughs> I was like I was near max level, yeah. and I didn't. It, it got its head torn off before it could even get five feet in. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. So yeah, that's, that's what I've been doing. And when I'm not playing uh, Dragonflight, which I'm playing quite a lot actually, I, I'm enjoying Dragonflight quite a bit. I just got my shoulders from uh, not my shoulders. I got those a couple of years ago. I just got the shoulders from uh, Tomb of Sargeras. Finally, the Mythic ones. Nice. So you can check off. Myth- I'll never need to go back to Mythic uh, Tomb of Sargeras ever again. Now we're oh, on. Boy, we're on to to the next one, which is that one I can never remember the name of. I want to say Algalon, but that's not. <laughs> it. Yeah, I, I can't remember. But anyway, I got to go there next, and then we'll, we're going to try Battle Star. Thank you, Antorus. Yes, that was it. <laughs> I was waiting I to see if we would snap into it. Place. No. That place with that thing and that guy and uh, hmm. Yeah, it, that is pretty much what it is. It is that thing and that guy, and that guy is annoying. <laughs> uh, I, basically, yeah. I, go ahead. I've been I've been spending time trying to solo battle for Azeroth raids. Some of them still not doable, but I can kill opulence with a couple of stacks of determination. Oh, you see, so doing that on LFR. Yeah, yeah, I could not do this on normal. Like, I, I went in there on normal, and I got up to uh-huh. Opulence, and he destroyed me. Like, yeah, he, just yeah he does me. that. He stomped me into the ground. You need at least one he, friend, I think, otherwise, on regular. Nope, 
It, well, probably unless you're crazy overgeared. Um, I think I believe Matt Matt Fawson, mm -hmm. the crazy oh, yeah. tank. I think he I think he's done it, but he's like really good at soloing. I am not really good at soloing. Yeah, shout out shout also, out to Matt. He the, cranky tank. You are so good at that. I love watching I your also, your recaps. I will also give him a shout out for being. I'm in his guild, uh, so basically he's the reason I get to raid at all. Because uh, most people aren't too keen on bringing a blind guy along. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, you don't you don't like having blind people in your raid? Why not? He says, joking. Uh, but yeah, Matt's really good at it. Matt goes prop for one thing. I'm I'm stubbornly trying to do it as fury, which is huh, not always going to work. But I did get the uh, first boss down. The the one I, I basically got up to opulence. I killed everybody until I hit opulence. Even that annoying two two group. The there's a an orc monk and a blood elf. I think mage. Uh, those guys are really annoying. They're not hard necessarily. <laughs> They're just extremely annoying because they are like popping all over the place. It's like, could you stand still long enough for me to kill you? That's all I ask. I'm just asking you to hold still so I can kill you. Is this too much? But apparently it is too much. Mm, yeah. Like I killed, I killed opulence and then I tried to do council after that. And that's like, um, no, no, that's not going to work. You're going to be polymorphed until you're dead. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, fair enough. If I keep piling more people until they were dead, I absolutely would do it. But yeah, no, hmm, nonetheless, yeah. It is, it's fair. It's difficult to deal it's not, with. Yeah, it's it's not something you can go in and like collect your transmog. Of course, I killed opulence and I got the helm, which was what I was there for. Ooh, nice. It was the leather helm. Oh, it was nice. the leather version, and I'm I I just I want that crown. I want that crown. I need yeah. a plate version of the crown for transmog. My my many 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 times killing uh the you know the the avatar of sargeras and seeing the, the rogue shoulders and paladin shoulders drop feels your pain like i <laughs> i just i lost count of how many times the rogue shoulders dropped in that i was like oh my god this is just never gonna get gonna happen i'm gonna be killing this thing till the end of my life and then i went in on my uh night elf not even thinking about it and boom dropped <laughs> so, yeah i don't know but we should probably talk about stuff going on besides you know our various transmog things although why i couldn't tell you I have no idea why we should do anything but talk about transmog, but here we are. Transmog is the game. <laughs> Honestly, I saw a study somewhere saying that there's actual like evidence that if you like your transmog, you do better. Yes. I have no idea if it's true, but I'm going to just believe it from now on because it suits my, you know. It, it's I've a psychological investment. Yeah, I, I learned. I, I feel like it's true. And because I feel it, it is true. It becomes true in my heart. Yeah. But uh, speaking of things in our hearts, First up, I, I wanted to mention this one just because you might not be aware of it if you play World of Warcraft. Uh, today, actually, like literally today, class tuning changes have gone live for, for several classes. Um, going to look at the ones it's for. Uh, basically, I think it's uh, Demon Hunters, Druids, and Evokers. The Druids in question is Feral Druids, who get us, who've gotten a straight up 30%, uh, three, no, sorry, 3% ability damage increase, just straight up across the board for everything Ferals do, an extra 3% damage. Um, possibly because they weren't doing as much damage as they should have. I don't know. Uh, vengeance hunters get vengeance demon hunters. Sorry, not vengeance hunters. Vengeance demon hunters get uh, thick skin armor bonus increased to 130 percent. Calcified skins initial damage uh, reduction value increased to 12 percent, and pain bringers duration increased to six seconds. So those are all changes to demon hunter tanks to make them tank more tanky, I guess. And evoker apparently devastation evokers got a fix here um you see fire breath damage increase uh lay waste uh, increases deep breath damage more um eternity surge is increased by 10 percent firestorm damage increased by 20 percent eye of infinity generates two essence from one uh spell weaver's dominance increases critical strike damage to 20 230 percent which 220 percent before and uh iridescence damage bonus is increased to 20 percent from 15 percent uh Hunters, though, if you're a survival hunter, there's actually some good news. Flat out, all ability damage and pet damage increased by 2%. Then butchery and carve damage is increased by 10%. Fury of the eagle damage is increased by 10%. And wildfire bomb damage is increased by 15%. Fire mages got uh, buffs to both flame strike and living bomb. Flame strike goes up by 15%. Living bomb goes up by 25%. Frost mages also see some, some buffs with uh, frost bolt damage is going up by 20%. Uh, Ray of Frost damage increased by 40%, and Glacial Spike damage increased by 10%. Brewmasters get a couple of buffs. Uh, 
Efficiency of stagger against magical damage is increased to 45% from 35, and the cooldown of Celestial Brew is reduced to 45 seconds. And then Mistweavers get a lot of buffs. Uh, all healing increased by 5%. Vivify healing increased by an additional 5%. Blackout kick damage increased by, five, by 6%. Rising sun kick damage increased by 8%. Tiger palm damage increased by 15%. Uh, spinning crane kick damage increased by 5%. And awakened feline now transfers 70% of spinning crane kicks damage into healing. So that's all pretty good for them. Uh, all these have buffs, been... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mistweavers have been kind of on the low side of the healing meters in general. So it looks like they wanted lost. to make them good for both, you know, most for both soloing and you know group healing. All well, these not only that, changes, but uh, healer damage is very, very, very much a stat that's looked at for uh, Mythic Plus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all these pally changes are ret. They're they're good ret changes. So if you're a ret pal- paladin, you're going to get a Crusader Strike damage buff. Blade of Justice damage buff, uh, Final Reckoning damage buff, and Shield of Vengeance's cooldown is reduced to 90 seconds from 120. These wow. are all pretty big buffs. Like Crusader yeah. Strike is 40%, which is kind of nuts. Yeah. But Red, Red Paladins are the squishiest plate wearing class by far. So the thing I like about these Paladin changes is the developer's notes that say, you know, we're looking into survivability. Survivability isn't where we would like. And they're they're working on some more improvements. So I'm mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing what's next. The priest changes are very similar. Uh, Holy gets a three percent damage increase. I mean healing increase, uh, just across the board. Shadow gets a bunch of damage buffs. No, actually, Shadow's getting nerfed. Mind damage, mind blast get buffed though. But the focused will gets nerfed from down to ten percent damage increase. Uh, ten percent damage reduction. Sorry, down from fifteen percent. But mind blast and mind flay both got buffed. Uh, mind spike damages. These are all 15% increases for Shadow, by the way. All of these increases are. Uh, mind, mind Flay, Mind Blast, Mind Spike, Void Torrent, and Devouring Plague all get 15% increased damage. Rogues, uh, Outlaw Rogues get a, a change to Precise t- Cuts, the talent. It reduces the bonus to Blade Fury damage per missing target below its maximum to 2% from 3%. Uh, Warlocks getting buffed everything they get is getting buffed agony five percent corruption five percent drain soul ten percent uh pandemic invocation increased by twenty percent quite frankly blizzard i think you should have left it alone uh speed not not because of anything the warlocks did just the word pandemic don't don't buff anything to it um seed of corruption five percent shadow bolt uh ten percent siphon life ten percent unstable affliction backlash damage is no longer increased from increased damage dealt modifiers so it feels like they've nerfed Unstable Affliction and buffed everything else. Uh, meanwhile, Destruction, Channel Demon, 10%. Reign of Fire, these are all buffs. And if it's a, it's a nerf, I'll tell you. Reign of Fire, 15%. Soul of Fire, 20%. Infernal and Blasphemy Immolation damage is also up by 10%. Conflagrate damage increased by 10%. Doesn't work in PvP. Immolate damage, 10%. Doesn't work in PvP. And Incinerate damage doesn't work. It's up to 15% and does not work in PvP. And uh, that's it. That's every class change that's on the list. So there's also some PvP changes, but uh, most of them are pretty standard. I just, I'm, so, this is a lot of class tuning to, to just pop a hotfix for. Like, this is a I'm, sizable chunk of classes getting changes. But not surprising. It, it feels like they've been doing a lot of class tuning by hotfix since Dragonflight launched. I mean, we've seen some pretty significant hotfixes that do class balance. But I mean, it's not surprising, right? We we kind of knew that this was going to happen with the release of the new talent systems and when content was actually alive and groups were actually like starting to get together and content was being consumed uh, outside of the vacuum of beta testing, that there probably was going to be large periods of like fine tuning until everything was able to settle in. Dragonflight, and we've said this multiple times, massive amounts of changes. This is huge fundamental changes for a lot of classes and how they interact with the game. So not terribly surprised, but good to see that it's continuing and that they're continuing to make an effort to balance and address issues. I agree with you in this. I should probably have talked instead of just nodding my head. (laughs) (laughs) Mm, That makes sense that no one can see you, Matt. That's that's one of the things about doing an audio podcast. Like I'm often sitting here and like making faces or hand gestures, and it's like, wait, no one, no one has any 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 idea. I'm sitting here alone in my room, talking to, gesturing at no one. Yeah, but I have googly eyes on my microphone, so I at least think I'm talking to somebody. It's fine. <laughs> I think next up, we should probably mention that the darkening of Tristram's live. Uh, when did it go live last week? 
Um, it actually went live a few days before we we made the post. I think it went live at the beginning of the month. And it's basically going to the end of January, uh, January thirty first. Yep. And if you've played the Dark Knight of Tristan before, it's basically the original Diablo game inside Diablo three. It, it's still that. You can still get neat cosmetic stuff like the Butcher's Cleaver and so forth. The original one. Um, it's a lot of fun. I've always liked it, uh, but I don't think they've changed it particularly for this. It's no. just basically exactly the same. It's it's kind of like WoW holidays where they make a holiday and it's like the first time it's like super, super cool and exciting. And then the second time it's maybe a little less, oh, this is a nice change of pace. I'll go do this. This is still fun. And like the third time it starts really dropping off. Mm, that's kind of that's kind of how we how I feel about this. It's like, OK, it's cool. But I've I've done this a few times before. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, that's fair. It, that is pretty much my my issue with it as well. But I mean, it's not terrible or anything, and it, it is there for you to do if you haven't done it yet. Somehow, I don't know how. Maybe you've not played Diablo three at all. That would probably be the only way I can think of. But who knows? Um, anyway, uh, also, I wanted to talk about this one because we we've talked about it before a little bit, but it's coming up pretty hard and fast. Uh, Wrath Classics, uh, Wrath of the Lich King Classic, is going to get its phase two. We're thinking this month due to the timing on the the uh, Joyous Journeys buff. I believe that was the the main reason why we thought it might be this yeah, month. Yeah, and and the PvP season is also ending. Yeah, so and, and like, once the season ends, they tend to want to bring in another one. Yeah. So that so, would be time for the phase to release. So yeah, Joyous Journeys lasts until the sixteenth, I believe. Yes, that's and, what I remember. It's till next yeah. week, I guess, next Monday. Yeah, so typically they have joyous journeys like before they release big new content. So you can level up. It's an XP buff if you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, to level up and get ready for the new content. And usually shortly after the buff goes away, there's new content. So it seems the timing seems very, very auspicious for getting Wrath Classic Phase 2, which is Olduar, one yeah. of the, which a magnificent raid. Lots of fun. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, in addition to Olduar, there will also be Nothing else. There, there isn't anything else. <laughs> I mean, there is, but it, it, it's not going to be like. I think the Titan Rune dungeons come in. Um, yeah. Then that'll allow you to take your uh, a five man group through dungeons and get gear from ten man raiding in Nax, uh, Eye of Eternity, and uh, Sartharion's Lair. Because that gear is, you know, the gear that was on those ten man runs is now gone. They now drop the twenty the ten ten man guild runs will now get twenty five man gear from those raids. And as a result, they've put the ten man gear on Titan Rune Dungeons as a way for you to be just running five man content and get that gear, which will put you in better position to run Olduar. Um which is, you know, the gear is so slightly better in Olduar than than twenty five man Nax and so forth. I believe it's like two sixteen versus two twenty five. Um but I think it might actually be 206. But regardless, that's that's coming in as well. Um, I can't think of any other active content. Like, I, I know that there's going to be a new arena season. But I don't think there's, like... I didn't think the new five-man dungeon came until the next one. That's when they added... Yeah. In, uh, no, I think they're just... Theater. They're just doing the Titan Rune Dungeons. is going to be your new kind of five-man content. Yeah, which is cool. Like, it's sort of like a mythic dungeon. Uh, yeah. It's it's there's going to be like a Titan rune that you can activate to make the dungeon harder and you get better loot. Is basically how it's going to work. I don't. I'm going to be upfront. I I have not felt even like I I liked the previous offerings of the the classics before. Like I was interested. I I played a little bit of WoW Classic. I even played a little bit of a uh, Burning Crusade Classic. I have not even looked at Wrath. Um, and it's not because it's bad or anything. Uh, I just. I feel so like Wrath, <laughs> Wrath is the one. If there's that too, but Wrath is also the one that I really feel like I played into the ground. Yeah, you know, there's a period of time where I was running Trial of the Crusader four times a week. You know, and then that hand gesture didn't. Again, you didn't see it, but I had four <laughs> fingers up. So, but I mean, like, really, I was running ten man normal, ten man heroic, twenty five man normal, and twenty five heroic every week. Yep, same. And it just was like ah, it's like this round room. I just stand in this room over and over again. Listen, I was able to kill players on the way down with water walk. That made it okay. Yeah. That's why heroic leap got, I got used a lot for me. When I was on that <laughs> top. Actually, I don't know if we had heroic leap yet. I can't remember if we had heroic leap in wrath or not. Oh my God. I remember getting, no, I know we had it because I remember using it and uh, we would be fighting up at the top with those Valkyr in ICC. 
and they they'd make the version of the copies of you and one of the copies would always heroic leap everybody i remember that now okay cool <laughs> oh god yes this is why i don't think i want to play wrath classic as much because i've just i'm still wrath is still here in me at this moment I, and i don't feel the need to uh to do that again I I have so much nostalgia for Wrath. I mean, I loved playing back in Wrath, but it's it's just hard to find the time to do it. There's just there's too much to do, and like Dragonflight doesn't help that. It's a it's a quality problem to have in a game, right? But there's just so much to do, and there's so much that rewards you for doing stuff in game. I mean, I could play Wrath, or I could go basically farm up a mount that's a otter dragon with glasses. <laughs> I know which one's going to grab me a little bit more. I hope it doesn't grab you. It's an otter. They grab things. That's what happens. Yeah, I know. I, I was trying to make a joke about the whole cr- cracking shells with its stomach sort of thing. But um, yeah, also it looks like Elton John to me. So that's that's always weird. I keep hearing it saying. <laughs> all, the, man. all the more reason why it will always be Stony Danza. Now we have an an, an otter <laughs> that looks like Elton John. It's, just, it's fate. See? But regardless of, of Joe really, really wanting the Stony Danza thing. Um, I, if if Blizzard was smart, they'd do a series of ads like they did back in the day. Except this time, they just get Tony Danza going. I have no idea why people are talking about. It. <laughs> what do you wait? Why am I trending? <laughs> I'm not dead. Like, oh, okay, all right. It's it's just that, but whatever that is. But um, whilst we're talking about things going on, this is one where I read the headline several times and had no idea what was going on, and it started <laughs> to hurt my head. So I decided I'd I'd make Liz explain this. <laughs> Uh, Hearthstone Battlegrounds is now on season three, or season three is coming. I'm not sure. Yes. What it is. Uh, Battlegrounds season three is coming this month on the 17th. Okay. So that's pretty soon. That's really yes. soon. That is All seven right. days from now. That'll what? be next Tuesday. Oh, how how did this happen? How does time happen? I don't know. It's uh, but yes. So uh, they're added undead and dual type minions. What does this mean? Um. So they're kind of doing a content cadence where they roll out an expansion for the constructed mode of the game. Kind of your core Hearthstone experience with Hearthstone being 10 games in a trench coat. And then, you know, after that, they roll out a new Battleground season. This is obviously only season three. They haven't been doing the Battleground seasons for too long, but this seems to be their pattern. And uh, in the last expansion they added undead minions and dual type minions so now we're seeing those moved into battlegrounds which have a much more limited pool of minions than you do in kind of standard hearthstone and i think those dual type minions are gonna have like a huge impact on battlegrounds much bigger than they do in constructed modes of the game because battlegrounds is built pretty significantly around war bands which a warband would be like a type of minion that you build your board around, a specific type of minion, because you'll have lots of minions that's like, oh, this minion buffs other minions of, it t- of its type. So you might have a pirate warband, and you have all sorts of cards that buff pirates specifically, so you put as many pirates down as you want. Now these dual type minions are going to be like, oh, maybe this is an undead pirate. So I could put the undead pirate down and it'll do something for my pirate minions, but it might also do something for my undead minions. So that could create like really different board compositions. Really just that could really change the playing field here. I think it's going to be interesting to see how this shakes out because uh, Battlegrounds has kind of tried to encourage what would be called a menagerie play style, which is where you don't pick a single warband. And you have lots of different types of minions. And there are a few cards that kind of support that, that buff things if you have different types of things, lots of different types of things. But it's it's a harder way to play and you don't you don't get as much value from it usually than you would by like playing a board that's all murlocs or all pirates or all whatevers. So this, uh, I think the dual type minions are gonna open up some some new opportunities, and I'm looking forward to it. We don't know everything about what's coming yet they're like they're doing this thing where they like trickle out information you know so we got a little today we're gonna get a little more you know tomorrow a little more the day after and it's like they're trickling out all the information over the next week but i think it's gonna be pretty cool and i think battlegrounds is the most fun game in a trench coat part of hearthstone they are also adding um professor putricide as a hero in battlegrounds 
which Professor Putricide used to be a hero, but they removed him a long time ago. Now he's coming back, and his hero power is that he can create a custom undead minion for you. And uh, that's probably going to be super overpowered and maybe kind of disgusting because cobbling together undead out of body parts is just a little disturbing, but it may help your gameplay and thus be worth it. Cool. So that's all possibly coming on the 17th or do we know, like, is there going to be like a it's, trickle or is it just all going to happen on the 17th? It is, it is all going to happen on the 17th and it's just news is kind of coming out in a trickle. They're doing that thing I hate where they're just... Just tell me, just tell me all the things, give me the information. But no, it's like, we'll give you a tiny bit of information today and a tiny bit tomorrow. Hearthstone loves doing that. And it drives me crazy. I just want to know. I want to know these things. Tell me, tell me things. Okay. Yes, it's, it's coming next week. You will see Battlegrounds Season 3 live. And of course, because Blizzard loves battle passes, it's going to have its own battle pass with a free and paid for rewards track with uh, cosmetic rewards. The Hearthstone battle passes are all about cool cosmetics if you're into that and if you missed our last week's uh year end 2022 uh podcast we talked a little bit about the various uh battle passes and so forth that game companies especially blizzard were have been doing and we talked about the hearthstone one in particular which is i think you described it was like now for the game the game that is 10 games in a trench coat i need at least three battle passes in a trench coat um, yeah, I mean, I mean, there are only two battle passes so far, but it's like there are other game modes, and are there? I mean, are we eventually going to get there to be it? To, to there's two. Ten, yeah, there's only ten two battle, battle passes. passes. Yeah, there's only two battle passes, but then there's a third thing you also have to pay. Oh for. yeah, there's the there's the battleground bash, which uh, is cosmetics you can pay for, and it's kind of you're right, it's kind of battle pass e, and that you pay for it, and then you have to play the game to get it to get your rewards. But uh, now that we've done horrifying ourselves with that topic, I, I Mitch did a post about awesome games done quick, which I is not something I was tremendously familiar with. But uh, from what I understand, it's basically just speed run madness. Essentially. Speed, speed run for charity. Yeah. And it's going, it, it started last week. It's going all the way through this week. Uh, Liz emailed and said which day it was ending. And I have already forgotten because I'm old and my memory <laughs> is broken. I think it's the 14th. I think it's Saturday it's the 14th. It's Saturday or possibly Sunday early, early in the morning, depending on your time zone. Okay. Uh, but since this is recording on a Tuesday, I'm not going to tell you about the ones from Tuesday because, I mean, you you will not have gotten them by the time you hear this. Uh, but I will mention that we've got games like Stardew Valley, Stray, Spyro all on Wednesday. We're going to see um, Mario Kart... Power Wash Simulator, which is an actually hilarious game to watch somebody play, by the way. Um, I'm I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, I remember watching people draw stuff on the van. It's it's really <laughs> kind of nuts. Um, there's a Metroid Prime one, one mm -hmm. and two. Uh, there's going to be Cult of the Lamb. I I am super excited about Cult of the Lamb. I didn't even know you could speed run that game. Um, you can speed run anything. These people yeah. are just like. Yeah boldly talented at finding every second you can shave off of these things. Like what was the, they did like mass effect two last year and it was like in 30 minutes. Yep. It mass was something effect in 30 just, minutes. Maybe it was 45, but it was ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. There's final fantasy, uh, 14. There's going to be step Ma step mania, super Mario all-star shuffle, which is a game, you know, it's a very cool game. So half-life Alex, uh, Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sun, First Sin, sorry. Um, Sun, Sin, it's, you know, Dark Souls. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Link to the Past is going to be played. Um, Pokemon Legends Arceus, or Arceus, I don't Arceus. know. How Arceus, okay. Uh, that's a speed run that's going to be happening. Uh, Super Mario Brothers 3, and yeah, there's a lot going on. So if it's, a, if it's for charity, as you've pointed out, um, it's, you know, a, a good time for people to have, and you can help various charities so either of you looking forward to anything in particular i mean uh, i think i am gonna tune in for power wash simulator and stray i mean sometimes it's just fun to turn it on and watch and see whatever crazy thing they're doing right now i feel like speed running stray is almost losing the point of stray because i mean i don't want to go faster i, I just want to spend more time with little kitty i don't necessarily care about the story but it's, i mean still cool to see him do it yeah it's like an experience to see them get through these games as fast as possible like can you imagine playing Mass Effect 2 in a half hour from start to finish? Can you imagine that happening? Not with anybody surviving. 
<laughs> I mean, even even with even with no one surviving, that's like really hard. They find like every ridiculous trick and like wall you can clip through, and it's just it's just wild to watch. It's not a way I would want to play a game, but it's fun to watch. Yeah, yeah I, I kind of agree with that. Yeah, I like watching the um, the hundred percent runs of multiple games mm-hmm. because. Finishing game quick, yeah, there's a lot of ways you can do that, and any percent means you can skip a lot of stuff, but, like, Outer Wilds is currently, as the time of this recording, uh, they are currently going through it in a 100% stranger run. I want to see what that looks like. I want to see what makes it a stranger run. Um, But, like, also some of it is, like, bringing back games that I haven't seen in forever that I'm super just, like, excited to see people play again, like... Pokemon Red and Yellow, any percent glitchless, like Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D, not the original one, but the one that was on the 3DS, which was a slightly different game. Uh, Neon White, I'm looking very forward to. That game was made for speedrunners. It's uh, platformy, actiony, and card dealing. Like, it is wild. And it is super stylistic. And I love watching people play it because I cannot, I am not good at that game at all. <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, the, the, okay. Here's a game that maybe some of you remember. Do you remember the Noid from the old com- yeah. like commercials for like, I honestly don't. Well, <laughs> he, he would try to steal pizza. Uh, they made games about him because their mascots were all the rage. And apparently they're going to be running that at one point, And that's hilarious. Cause I remember that game and accidentally renting that from zappers. Uh, no, it's just, it's a good time. I look forward to it every year. So, yeah. Um, I, I, my oh, also, seven years. oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, I will point out that if you miss it, you can catch these later on their YouTube channel. Yes. Usually you can find them like a day or two afterwards on their YouTube channel. Yeah, they are there. They are crazy quick about getting those edits up. I yeah, they are. <laughs> wow. I'm having trouble <laughs> talking today. Uh, I think at this point though, we've covered most of the topics. Um so we should probably move on and, and actually we got a fair amount of questions this week, so we should probably do those. Um and if you well go ahead, Liz. Does does no one want to talk about the state of the Are You Kitten Me quest? I mean, because I really don't know the state quest. of it. I had not heard of it. <laughs> Joe, are you with thing. me here? This quest is so annoying. I don't think I've done it yet. Well, oh, it's a climbing we quest. Haven't... I haven't done the climbing quest yet. Oh no, I have done that you... one. Yes. Okay. You haven't done it because ninety eight percent of the time it doesn't work. It's like the it's one okay. where you have to save the kids that are dangling, right? Yeah, yeah, they're dangling up on a cliff surface, and you've got to go rescue them because bronze dragons and time magic and something. Except it's a climbing quest, and you go to the you go to the cliff, and you're like, okay, well, there's a cliff here, and there's not a rock. Yeah, I was gonna say like it was uh, the one that had very clear like handholds missing. Yeah, it's and it's kind of varies. It's either handholds towards the bottom or like you get a few rocks up and then there are no handholds. And uh, it's a bug that I understand Blizzard is working on, but having trouble reproducing in order to troubleshoot and fix it. So it's like I you want to reproduce it, log on to my realm because it I've done it once. I did it the first time it was up and never again has it worked. I. I did it once and I remember completing it, but I also had the upgrade for the, um, the grippy hands. And so I mean, like, I, there was a grippy hands like, where like the rock should have been. Mm-hmm. Ah, that does help. But it's like when the first couple of rocks aren't there, you just can't grab the next one up and there's not a grippy hand low mm-hmm. enough to the ground. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, that's my, my current game frustration. Cause I, I want to rescue kittens and, uh, I mean, maybe the kittens don't want to be rescued. Maybe it's like a real good view up there or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. This is reminding me of something my cat did once, but I'm not going to talk about it because it's <laughs> not game related. Uh, so, yeah, we are going to move on to questions now, though, because whilst I am sad about these cats that I've, I've not actually seen them yet. So that's actually kind of amazing to me that I've not seen this quest. But, it, yeah, I haven't done any of the climbing quests yet. I just I don't like climbing. I get really... <laughs> It's like fishing. I, I don't like fishing either. That's been hard. There's been like a lot of need to fish and that they've really, they've really pumped at this expansion. But uh, rather than commiserate with me about my fishing thing, I'm going to ask you all keep in mind, if you got a question here for the show, cause we're going to be talking about those, uh, you can go to our email. You can email it to us at podcast at blizzardwatch.com with the subject line podcast or blizzard watch. So we know it's for the show, 
or you can go to our Discord server. We've got the Patreon and podcast questions channel for our patrons. We tend to look there first because, you know, you guys pay the bills uh, and we like to give you something back in return. It's like a nice thing that you do for us. So it's a nice thing we like to do for you. But if you can't support us on Patreon, we understand. We know that life is constant series of disasters and you're just stumbling your way through it. At least I am. I don't know. You, you guys might have it here. But regardless, if you don't support us on Patreon, you can still go to the Q and podcast questions channel for non-patrons and you can ask a question there as well. And we look there as well. Um, in the past, we've done various systems. So this time I'm going to say, Joe, pick somebody. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to pick myself because that would be whatever. I like myself. All right. We're going to go with this one. Hello, all. I wanted your opinions on some dragon flight observations. The storylines in the main quest chain was really good, but I came into the expansion with LFR gear and everything was too easy to kill. It seems like everything is too low. Second is the reputation system. I'm at seven to 10 with the groups and nothing left to do but daily quest. I dread having to do dailies for months to get up to rep 30 or 40. And this is from our friend, Suggle Kitten. See, it all comes back to kittens. It's all about kittens. I, yeah, we're tying it all together here. Kittens and endless daily quests. Yeah, the daily quests are definitely, uh, they're a thing. And so, like, the game is definitely designed to really push you to do, like, the weeklies and do the events uh, because they give slightly more reputation than, uh, like, the bog standard quests uh, that you go out there. Although the quests do at least reset twice a week or twice in a weekly reset. Uh, So there's... You know, at least that. And I don't, I personally haven't found it too daunting, but I'm also the type of person when it comes to reputation, and I don't know how you two are, I just don't care most of the time. I just get there when I get there, unless there's really something that, like, makes my lizard brain go, that's really shiny, and I must own it and put it in my bags and then never use it. Then I get weirdly I, motivated. I care so much, and... And that's because the uh, Dragon Dragon Scale Expedition has jewel crafting recipes where you can make yourself like jeweled dragon toys or pets or something. And I'm like, yeah, that's the uh, that's what I want. That's my whole purpose in the game. And I'm also very bad at grinding reputation, so I'm not there yet. <laughs> well, Domehammer in chat bring, points out that uh, just doing the uh, the weeklies and not even and events and not even doing dailies. Uh, if you were doing them from the beginning, which I think a lot of people didn't know to do them from the beginning, uh, like people are at like 17, 14, 14, 18 in that range, which I could see because people in our guild are like that, too. Matt, what do you think? Uh, I don't do that many quests. There aren't any daily quests. There are mostly just world quests as far as I can tell. There's daily quests. I don't know where they are. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're talking about world quests. Okay, I think you're because I was like, there's quests I can do every day. I, I, I was the person who was like, when they said they were going to be making world quests more recent, I was the one like, yes, do more of them. I love world quests. I've always loved them. I can sit there and do like a hundred world quests. I don't care. Just put them in front of me. I will do them over and over again. Uh, but I haven't really been doing that many because the rewards haven't been that great and they don't come up fast. It's like they tend to be like three days at the. At it the is last. three. It's, it's three days. It's three days exactly. Yeah. So I yeah. I don't really pay attention to them unless there's like an upgrade or I oh it's got one of those Titan matrixes. Otherwise I just let them be. I just always do uh, the Rathion bit at the Obsidian Sanctum there. I always do Rathion slash Sibelian. It depends on the character I'm playing, but I always finish that out entirely. Usually you can do it in a day, and then I'll do a different character through it in the next day. I do that. Uh, I haven't even touched the the, the the Tuscar. Sorry to tell you guys this, but I am that horrible, black-hearted, withered fiend who doesn't <laughs> care about Tuscar. What happened really but, is that I took that section of Matt's soul and just put it into my own so I could have even more love for Tuscar. Uh, if, if that's what you did, it worked. Because cause I don't The ritual care. is complete. Yeah. but <laughs> I, So I haven't bothered with them that much. I mean, still, like, well, I can look at my... What's my rep for them, guys? Guys, yeah. On this alt, I am Valdraken Accord twelve, um, Maruk Centaur ten, Dragon Scale Expedition four, and Iskara Tuskar one. And barely, it's like almost filling the circle to get to two. I just, I have not really bothered. It's not, you know. So, and most of that was just from the the faces I got. I don't, I don't feel like it's. It hasn't bothered me. I, I don't feel like stressed about it. I've gotten to the point where I can run the story quest I wanted to run. And, and that's, 
that's it. I was happy and I haven't really felt tense about it at all. But, you know, everyone's different. I will say that in terms of the difficulty killing stuff, I went through it on four different characters with four wildly different levels of gear. Mm-hmm. Um, the character that, I, that I'm on now was actually the character that had the best gear, even though that she's very much not anymore. But she was the one that I was playing primarily in Shadow in Shadowlands, so I had better gear on her. Versus like one of the characters, I didn't even do the event, so I was going. I came up here on like 160 gear, and I'd say if you you don't really understand the difference between the last LFR gear of Shadowlands and I just hit 70 gear until you've tried doing the start of the next expansion in I just hit 70 gear because oh, my Torin got his hooves inserted in his own body in a way I can't talk about on this podcast by everything he met. Like it was unreal how badly he was dying. So I get, you know, if you did LFR and you've got what you think is like not that great gear. Cause you know, it's just from LFR compare that to the greens you were in when you hit 70 and, and think about the power differential between those two things. They do have to try and balance it for everybody. If you think it's too easy, the hard stuff is coming. Meanwhile, some poor person is going to have to like try and survive until they get their first eye level two something piece of green quest gear because the gear they're in is like an item level one forty five, and they're going to die a lot. Uh, so just yeah, keep my, that up. my hunter had a surprisingly easy time, and my hunter really wasn't very geared. I. I struggled around, I want to say, 68-ish in finishing out. Like, the last two or three levels were pretty grueling. I died a bunch. But also because that's when, even though I was overgeared, because I'm a primarily a healer, my stuff was not, I like, optimized for, like, DPS, and it started to, started to really hit, right? So, but my, my... Hunter didn't care. Just rolled through the whole thing. Liz, what was your leveling experience like? Um, pretty good. I mean, on my main, I felt like I just vastly overpowered everything. I mean, I went in kind of heroic raid gear leveled, and it was just like, okay, I could sleep and like smack my keyboard with my hand and get things done. Like, that's just what the early game felt like. And I mean, I think with most expansions, you get to max level and then stuff, that's when stuff starts hitting hard. And uh, then I have my Warlock I've been leveling. Not 70 yet, but close. Uh, My Warlock is basically unkillable. I think my Warlock has had the most deaths when I went to Throne of Thunder to farm Transmog, and I was repeatedly defeated by the Wind. So, uh, yeah. (laughs) Yes, the Wind is actually the worst boss in that raid by us. Somewhere, Alakir is smiling. (laughs) <laughs> it's, it's the the number one ki- the the killers in order number one killer of the wind number one number two killer random turtles uh number three killer <laughs> lightning wind and then much 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 yelling is had by all mm, like they, added yeah, lightning, yeah, they added lightning to wind and put it on a platform that can section off yeah no it's yeah no that 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 whole thing wind is my foe Mm, yeah, I also doing the dragon riding quests. It's not so much wind; it's the trees in the way of the wind that is pushing me forward. That's that's always a problem. Darn you, foliage! Yeah, no, I definitely screamed that at least a dozen times while doing some races. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't, I haven't found it to be the leveling curve to be worse than it usually is in an expansion, and but. Early in the leveling curve, it feels very easy. It feels like maybe easier than it should be, even for kind of undergeared alts. Uh, I tell you, t- taking my Torrin through, he was not having this un- overpowered experience. He was very much dying continuously until I started getting the 200 gear from quests. Yeah, yeah, I, you're probably right. I did not go in in level 60 quest greens. Yeah, it was it was not good. <laughs> <laughs> But um, okay, I guess then that leads us to Roxy's question. Oh, now I have to read a question. Okay, from Roxy. Hello, great watchers. It is your friend Roxy, Goblin Shaman, Arpidia, Drakthir Evoker, with a question and a favor to ask. I recently got my Evoker to 70, and it's been real fun to play. I really enjoyed the customization options they have for their visage form, but I wish there was a way to fight in visage form more. 
as preservation, there's actually very few abilities that require you to be in dragon form. In my ideal, you should be able to treat dragon abilities like metamorphosis for demon hunters. That is a really great idea. I'm, I'm with you there. Where you swap in and out as you use abilities if you have chosen identity triggered. Do you think Blizzard would open up the option for people who prefer visage form? Would it be possible to ask your fellow Blizzard watchers, hello out there, fellow Blizzard watchers, if they could take two seconds to submit an in-game request for combat <laughs> visage form? I mean, that's that's how you do it. That's uh, democracy in action. Go place your vote. Um, the real, the biggest problem I have with Drakthir in general is your dragon, and that is super cool. Being a dragon is just so cool. I I think that's amazing. I love the idea of being a dragon, but it misses out on the most important aspect of the game, which is transmog, <laughs> yep. because they. They have a very limited set of appearance appearances you can use when you are a dragon, but you can use full transmog when you are in that visage form. And I'm kind of like, mm, kind of prefer the visage form so I can show off this rad transmog I have. I mean, I'm not supposed to argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there going, yeah, I mean, I've changed transmogs on this stream that I'm putting next to us talking. I've changed transmogs on this character five, six times in the, in the hour that we've been talking. For for no for no one, you know, I'm not doing anything. So yeah, I, I am I am on board with anything that gets you more transmog options. Quite frankly, I'm going to be honest. The fact that Drakthir are both a race and a class, the fact that you're Drakthir, you're Drakthir Evoker, has really led me to not particularly want to play them. Just it's just a thing. But also, I really like the other dragon kind people in yeah. this expansion. Uh, the Draconids and the I don't know what you call the ones that are like centaurs, but with dragons. Uh, but but I really like them a lot and wish they were playable now. Um, just so I could play like you know maybe a, a big dragony fighter type. I mean, let's face it, they're all just dragonborn anyway. Just you know, let us be done with it already. Give us you know just just let us play them for whatever class we want to play. Them. That's me. That's my grumping. I, I'm from. I I do have a thought about this class race thing, and. I feel like Drakthir only being evokers right now makes a ton of sense. Mm -hmm. And that Drakthir being able to be other classes is going to make a ton of sense later. Um, yeah. You know, I agree. like story, story wise, right now, it just completely makes sense. Okay, Drakthir have been locked up for 10,000 years or whatever. And they all they knew how to be was evokers, was to be great dragon warriors or great dragon healers. And, and now but, we're you know, here. As the, as they integrate into Azeroth, they're out here in the world with all these other people who are play doing all of these other different styles of combat and magic. They're going to learn that stuff. They're going to pick that up. And by next expansion, I bet we will have Drakthir who can be whatever class they want. If you do that, also give us the ability to be chonky. Yes. One, I want to be a chonky dragon boy. Um, but two, going back to the whole flipping your your ability thing or your visage thing. I think players should be given the choice. I think that that should be something that they do talk about. I agree with Roxy. Um, it's it's one of those things that bothered me about the class. Like when I saw the Vistage, I'm like, oh, you can choose to like do all sorts of magey things and or all sorts of evoker things while you're in this form, right? And then it just pushes you over and converts you. And the reason I bring that up is, is what do we see all the other dragons do in game? They can do stuff in their their chosen Visage. No problem. Give me that ability, please. Like, I, I think it's just, it's something that I would like to see them open up and maybe thematically it could fit in. Like Liz is talking about with the other classes where, you know, while they chose their visage, they still identified more with the dragons and more the dragon aspect of things. But as they've integrated more with the rest of Azeroth and the adventurers that have come here to help and, and all this, the stuff that they say, oh, you know, maybe, maybe staying in my visage isn't that bad. Maybe I like this a little bit more than I thought I did. And then they just give players the option. And then if you want to be the dragon with no transmog, you can turn into a dragon with no transmog. If you want to play the best part of the game and have access to transmog, then you can have access to transmog. Like I, I player choice. I'm all about player choice. And I, I think Blizzard is also being much more about player choice, this expansion. So I, I just feel like they're going to hear us saying this. They're going to hear us talking about transmog options and class options. And they're going to say, finally, I'm, gonna... I said, I've had enough. End Rossi. <laughs> End him. I will have no more of this. And then the you know, the ninjas. <laughs> I mean, I was I was just gonna say they were gonna let us play 
dragons or humans or whatever we want. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't have as much confidence in you as, as you do in that idea. But, you know, I would like it. Um, I would definitely think it was cool if they did. Um, hmm. So, yeah, I guess that pretty much says that we're all on board with Roxy's idea. So, Joe, you want to do the next one? Absolutely. We're going to go with some uh, wonderful question here from Shadana. Uh, is there a way to tell if you boosted a character in the past? I'm an orc warrior who was level 40, and I remember leveling him to max in whichever expansion had gladiator stance. But it is possible. Warlords. I, yep. <laughs> but the, it is possible that I used a boost on him. When did boost become possible? Was it before Warlords? I'd like to get that heritage armor set. So if I get this guy to 70 and don't get it, I'm going to, well, be irritated with myself and move on with life. The only way to tell if you use the character boost, because I do not, I, I think is there might be a transaction history in the there, portal if you, now. If you bought one, if you bought a unique one. Now, the I don't other th think it would be there if you bought, if you used your class, your one from buying the expansion. You'd have to see. The only thing I know of that you would be able to see is if, because when you hit max level after a character boost, you get a generic set of gear that is specific mm -hmm. to character boosting. So, yeah, it'd be, um, be combatants, something or other, it'd be green. Uh, it'd all be green because uh, you're saying it's an orc warrior. Yeah, I've I've boosted a few warriors. To, first time I did it to actually get that appearance. Um, so yeah, it would it would be green. It would you would you can't you can't sell it. Or you can sell it for like pennies. Uh, so if you kept it, that's one way to know. And you could look in your uh, you could actually look to see if you've got the appearance in your transmog. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, and uh, it was introduced in Warlords of Draenor because it began with the level ninety character boosts. Yeah, it's hard to remember what level things used to be anymore. What was the end of the level at Battle for Azeroth? Uh, 110. You sure it wasn't 120? 120, I think, was uh, Shadowlands. Was Shadowlands it? was 60. Or 60, yes, sorry, 60. No, you're right, it was 120. <laughs> it was 120, and then they crushed us down to 50, and then we went up yeah, to 60. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's all right. Uh, Liz, do you want to read Shadna's other question before we leave? Oh, let me uh, tab <laughs> over here and find it. Liz was yeah, like, I'm out, I'm um, out, I'm done. Uh, but I'm not. As soon as I think I'm out, they pull me back in. Yes, there it's the no podcast escaping. life. <laughs> uh, okay, again. Sorry, I'm in a questioning mood tonight. What prevents Blizzard from making leveling in vanilla one of the choices for the time walking campaigns? I understand that Cataclysm revamped zones, but is there something in the vanilla in the vanilla world that would not work with today's leveling? It doesn't um, exist anymore. Like, yeah, I in, I think too many zones got ripped out. It, well, it's not even it's not even that, that, that it work. doesn't exist in retail. Like the the code that they used to build cla like the classic servers, they had to go and buy back servers that they had auctioned off. When they did Cataclysm, all that stuff is gone. There is no more code for that in the game. Like you can't go back. They'd have to re. I mean, they'd have yeah, to revamp everything. To, yeah. They'd basically have to make, to go to WoW to WoW Classic, take all the stuff they built for WoW Classic, and then figure out how to import that into the current game, while also leaving in all the stuff that's already there to re that replaced it. Um, I just think the zones have been too torn up. Like the original experience just isn't. There's not enough of it left to have a vanilla time walk, like time walking campaign. Uh, seriously, you you seriously just might as well just have the game run WoW Classic. Like that would be what you'd level in. You'd level. Yeah. I I don't. I think it seriously would be an incredible undertaking to do this because keep in mind it took them a solid couple of years just to make WoW Classic. Yeah. And that's after they went and basically found I, some story like they found in a box patch now, one point twelve. Now, there is, now, maybe in the future, if that enough people, is that something that they want, they open up because they haven't done this, and I don't think they ever intended to, and this is a wild, like, long speculation, probably won't ever happen thing. They could always make it where you could just play vanilla and then transfer your character into the retail game, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think that would still be too complicated because of the two different systems, unfortunately. I and I mean, if you're playing Chromie Time, you want to play the modern game. That's kind of the point. You want to play the modern game. It's just you're picking an expansion to level through. You're just selecting your leveling experience is all. So, yeah, yeah. I just, I, there's not enough of it. There's not enough of it left. It's all gone. Yeah, yeah like, I mean, seriously, people don't understand how much of WoW Classic is rebuilt. It's, it's, it's essentially reverse engineered. Um, it's it's kind of similar to what they did for, for Diablo 2. They did Diablo 2 uh, re Reborn. They uh, 
resurrected. Sorry, resurrected. they went. They went and basically took the original game and had to reverse engineer it to figure out how to put the new stuff over the top of it. Uh, so yeah, th- there's a lot of work to this. It's not I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm saying it would be a lot of work. Yeah, not that I wouldn't like it as an option. I particularly do like and the memories I had of leveling in Vanilla WoW, but I don't like leveling with Vanilla WoW systems straight up. Never want to do that part again. <laughs> I do want to jump back a question. I am being told in Twitch chat that you actually, if you are one of the classic races, that all you have to do to get your heritage armor is to hit max level and be exalted with your faction. That is different than if you are an allied race if you're an allied race if you're um what's the other orcs it's eluding me maghar if you're a maghar then you cannot boost that's cool. right yay as i didn't know that i I didn't know that either i haven't even tried but it's it's good that we have such intelligent people watching us on twitch right now you at home should also come and watch the show live if you can because we have so much fun here and also because then you can answer questions for us. <laughs> See that too. That's really, that makes our jobs easier. Because and I like that. It, sometimes y'all know more than we do because sometimes I just, I didn't know this. I did not have this information in my brain. All right, though. I guess that pretty much wraps us up, except for this question Corey asked, which I'm pretty sure Liz actually answered herself at some point. Yeah, I answered in the queue. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, thank you guys. We're going to have Joe do his outro now because I always forget. That is quite all right. One of these times, Rossi's just going to do it, and it's going to be fantastic. But until then, Blizzard Watch is made possible due to the generous contributions at patreon.com slash Blizzard Watch. Your continued support means this podcast site and community is able to thrive and grow. Blizzard Watch supporters enjoy exclusive benefits like early access to the podcast, better chance at having your question answered on our podcast or the queue, and an ads-free site experience. Thank you very much, Joe. And thank you to both Liz and Joe for being here and helping us put this podcast together. Uh, Thank you guys for being here with us. This has been the Blizzard Watch Podcast. Thank you all, and we will see you next week.